Hey friends, good morning. My name's Steve, I'm the Bass Guy. I know you've, if you're checking in the first time, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, check out some of the other videos. We cover a lot of different topics from gear, through lesson ideas, through basic just anything. If you have any questions or you want to cover something, ask me. I'd love to talk about it. If not, that's cool too. Just watch, hang out. It is uh, January 22nd. And it is, uh, it is frigid here right now. It's about 16 degrees. It's a little cold. Um, today, I want to cover the modes of the melodic minor. We've talked about the, the major modes. And the major modes are generally what we focus on when we build songs. Like when we think of like, especially jazz tunes. But we harmonize those and we build all of our song structure out of there. There's a video I did on that a little bit, a little while ago. Now, when we talk about melodic minor, I'm not talking about pure melodic minor from the classical sense, I'm talking about jazz melodic minor. The difference between jazz melodic minor and melodic minor, melodic minor ascends melodic but descends natural minor. For instance, if I go C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C, right? That would be melodic minor ascending, descending. It just follows a natural minor coming back. Now, if I were to do this as a jazz melodic minor, I would do it up and down the same pattern. C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, and then back down. So it follows the same pattern ascending and descending. It's that, that symmetrical style scale and has a lot of weird half step, whole steps. Now, think about the melodic minor as basically being related to the major scale because all the notes of the C melodic minor are almost identical to the C major scale, except for one and that would be the third, the E flat. And that's kind of what makes this scale so exotic and sound so cool. And really we want to think about like how that scale, once you have it, where do, where do you apply it? How does it work? Why would I use it? If most of my songs are built out of major modes the, the, and harmonized from the major scale, why would I need to know my melodic minor? Well, that's, that comes down to a couple questions. Especially if you're into jazz and you want to harmonize or you want to, or you want to come up with other cool patterns and, and ideas that work through substitutions. That's where the melodic minor modes are going to come together. For instance, if you ever saw a Lydian dominant or you see a chord that has that sharp 11 in it. For instance, uh, I always think of Take the A Train. There's that, that chord in there, that D7 sharp 11. That's a melodic, that's a Dorian, uh, sorry, that's, <laughs> that is Lydian dominant. And that has that sound of that tritone inside there, which makes it, gives it a really cool sound. So we want to know what we're looking at, why we're looking at. And the best way to do this is to break it down, run through all the modes, and try to understand what the usage is over those. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to play the mode, each one of the modes, out of the melodic minor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the name. I'm going to tell you the usage of where we can use this because it makes more sense. So these are the seven modes of the melodic minor. Of course you have the first one, which is a melodic minor, which is uh, your, your first mode, uh, which is the one that I just played for you. Right? That's, that's melodic minor. You would also see that as minor major would be the way that we represented. You could also see it a couple different ways, but that is a minor third with a major seventh, so my, minor major. The next mode is going to be our Dorian flat two. You might use this on like a flat nine sus chord. Now, I started on C, so if I'm following the rules of, of modes, I'm going up through each, each note of the scale and playing another scale on top of that. For instance, this next mode would take place on D. This time it would be D. E flat because I have to stay true to the parent scale, which is that melodic minor. D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, D. So let me do that again. So D, E flat. So there's, if you're familiar with standard Dorian for the major, that's your standard Dorian. From the melodic minor, we have D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, D. So we end up with a flat nine or a flat two, whichever way you want to you approach that. The chord that this works well over is like a flat nine sus four chord. <clears throat> the next one in the grouping is going to be our Lydian augmented. 
And this would be that next step up. So we went D, we're gonna start in E flat. And this one's gonna be E flat, F, right? G, A, B, C, D, E flat. Now this is a pattern I like for it because a lot of these have a little bit of a strange pattern because each time you play it, you're implementing that E flat in there somewhere. So they're gonna have a little bit, a little bit of a symmetrical pattern. So again, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, D, E flat. And where this one is used generally is on a major sharp five chord. So that Lydian dominant, and you can move that shape around. You just wanna get comfortable with them in one key, and that's kind of why I'm doing C melodic minor. But once you get comfortable with that key, we wanna to start to move them around a little bit. Okay, so we left off on, on E flat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move up to F. Now because this is one, two, three, fourth note in the melodic minor, this one would actually fall under our Lydian dominant. So this is gonna have that sound like we think in Take the A Train, that, that, D, uh, that D altered scale that we hear in there. It's not really altered, it's, it's Lydian dominant. But that's gonna be that, in this case, it's gonna be F, G, A, B, C, D, E flat, F. And we have that, that tri, well, it's not a tritone, but we have that major third happening there, which makes this Lydian dominant. This would be represented in a chord structure where you'd see like a major, a dominant sharp 11, or you might see like um, a sharp five chord. So Lydian dominant might be like, you might in this case in, in Take the A Train, you'll see it as a D7 sharp 11, um, or you might see, think of it as a sharp major sharp five chord. Uh, nah, nah, actually, what am I thinking? Sorry, that was one step four. We're thinking this one, this is Lydian dominant, not Lydian augmented. Lydian dominant is going to be that sharp 11 chord. So, like, take the A train. And let me play that again for you. <clears throat> this one is going to be one that I've noticed with students, too, that you want to get the pattern under your fingers comfortable because you're going to automatically want to play it as dominant. And the pattern's a little bit different from what you're honestly used to, maybe at this point. But just take your time with it and get it under your fingers, and you'll feel it's pretty good. So the next one in the grouping is Mixolydian flat 6. This is a dominant 7 flat 13 is where this works. So in this case, it's still G. It's still G because remember, everything but the E flat is related to what we'd say is major, C major. So this time, what I have is this this Mixolydian flat six again works over a flat seven thir uh, so, uh, yeah dominant seven flat thirteen chord. So we're thinking G A B C D E flat F G. I love this one to use as a substitution when I'm playing like a solo and there's a dominant chord. It's a really nice way to give it some flavor, add a little special sauce to it or or uh, secret sauce, however you want to say it. has a really nice symmetrical sound. It's got a really cool tone. So remember that one is based off of that dominant, but it has a flat six inside there. And it's a great substitution and a great way to add some flavor to that dominant. It's a great substitution. Next up in the group is that A. So this is pretty cool too. So this is an Aeolian flat five, or you could think of it as Locrian sharp two. That's another way to approach this. So if you think of it as Locrian raised or sharp two, and you're familiar with the Locrian mode from, from the natural, from the major, it's gonna feel a little bit more comfortable. It might make a little bit more sense. Or you think of it as Aeolian flat five. I like, I like to think Locrian sharp, sharp two. But this works on diminished chords, half diminished chords. So your minor seven flat five chords. In this case, what I have is I'm going A, B natural, C, D, E flat, F, G, a. Let's try that one again. A, B flat, C. Uh, sorry, my bad. I, I actually went back to that one. A, B natural, C, D, E flat, F, G, A. Again, focusing on the altered note here is going to be that E flat. So we have to remember that the E flat has to be changed in each one of these. 
and you'll start to notice that there's a really cool connection. And we'll go deeper a little bit after this session, but let's use this one to kind of start off with. So up and down on this one, A, B natural, C, D, E flat, F, G, A. Okay. Now we come to the B. The B is the altered scale. Now I could continue up the scale, but what I want to do is I want to do it down here just to show you what this looks like. So this one is going to be, this is like super Locrian or altered scale, however you want to say it. Works on dominant chords with altered tensions. And you might be familiar with this one. We call, you know, we, we use it a bunch of different ways. So this one's going to be that C, that B, C, D, E flat. So that's an interesting shape right there. Let's do it again. B, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B. It's a neat way to play that. It has a really cool sound. I love the way that, that half step tension sounds in there. Remember, this works great on altered dominance. Whenever you see an altered dominant with a like a dominant with some kind of, you know, alt, like flat five, sharp five, flat nine, sharp nine, something that's altered in there, that's going to work really well. As opposed to a dominant with a sharp eleven, that's going back to that Lydian dominant. But this is for those altered scales, and this kind kind of fits in with it's almost like another choice, like symmetrical diminish. We have. Symmetrical diminish is outside of this grouping of chords, but it is something in the toolbox that we can pull from as well. And we'll get a little deeper into that one later. So going over these ideas, now we talked about, we played through each one of them and we talked about what the usage and what the chord would be over that. And it's going to take a little while to get comfortable with this. My recommendation and what I've been doing with my students is I have them play through it just to get it under their fingers because you really want to know what the sounds are, right? What are the sounds that I'm working with and how do they apply? It's like running through the modes. Like once you start running through the modes, you're like, oh, Dorian is a two, Mixolydian's a five, Ionian's a one, Aeolian's a six. You start to recognize them. You start to see, okay, well, this is how these chord structures work together. Start looking for some, some songs that are built in minor keys, like uh, Black Orpheus. That's a minor key. That's built in minor. That's a good one. And then once you start getting a little deeper, you start to use these in substitutions. Now, I don't expect you to go through this and be like, oh, this is amazing. This would be something you would take to your teacher and go a little bit further because these things do require a little deeper understanding than you can get from a video. And you have to have the right resources and understand where you are in your practice regime or in your understanding of, of tunes to make this work. Because this would not be something that you might throw into a pop tune. I mean, if, if, you, if you're playing like pop tunes, you know, like I just watched that video with Mac Miller and Thundercat. Great song, awesome bass line. Really just using pentatonics, but sounds incredible. This might not be where you want to use this unless you add in a second to flavor it up and it'd be a surprise. But most of the times I think you might get end up getting some uh, dirty looks if you start to implement this in like pop tunes and rock tunes. However, there are some places where it does work great, you know. And remember that these are all based off of the melodic minor jazz scale, the, the jazz minor, not, not just melodic minor, but jazz minor, ascending and descending the same way. Now there are some other scales out there for you to be aware of, like harmonic minor. Harmonic minor, we'll talk about another time. There are a set of modes that work for the harmonic minor as well. Maybe that'll be the next one. So I hope you guys are having a great 2019. It's been a, uh, it's, it's been a hell of a year so far. So uh, if you're out and about, you know, stop out, uh, check out the new standard. That's some of the stuff that we have on here. Or check out the, the duo trio that I have with Dave Johnson from Project Object. That's, uh, he's a bass player from Project Object. Him and I are doing a bass duo that is a whole lot of bass on bass with drums, sounds, and textures. It's interesting. You know, who knows where it's going to go. But uh, I hope you are well. I hope you practice. Find your sound. Find your voice. Peace, love, and low notes. Always keep striving. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out my channel. And if you are here, please remember to subscribe if, subscribe if you didn't already. Uh, it's nice to know you're out there. It's nice to know that you're watching. It's, it's really helpful. This thing, you know, it's, it's just, it's for fun. So I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, be well.